Oh, hello. Good evening to everybody in Facebook land and family and friends of TOB. God bless you tonight. We are excited to be hanging with you tonight. So let's see how the signal's going out. And let me check my phone and see if we get a signal. All right. I don't see it. There it is. You got it already? I got a signal. Let's see how it works. God bless you tonight. And there it is. Wow. You're special. I don't have that yet. All right. So let's see. Since we got there, let's see who. I think Facebook's mad at me because I'm not on enough. Get the, uh, get the <laughs> signal. Got a few people on here tonight. And uh, let's see. Uh, what happens and who's going to comment here oh, tonight? I see my mom's on. Oh. There it is. So looks like it's just you, me, and Karen uh, Anderson, aka our mom, is the first to uh, comment tonight. So God bless you and way to go, Idaho. God bless. It's good to see you on here tonight. So you are the winner. What did you win? She's still going after playing, after with, Zane. playing with Zane all day. I'm sure she <laughs> took a little nap and, and I'm here. But uh, anyways, hello, Andra. Good to see you on here tonight as well. So we're just going to give a few minutes to get people on here to our study and see who shows up with us as we are excited and have another time of the word here to discuss with each one that comes on tonight or later. So hopefully you will come here. So let's see if we can get some signals out there. It looks like a, a very slow response so far. It's cold. People are moving slow. People are moving slow. Is that how that right. works? Yeah. Right. Well, we'll see how that works. Molasses we'll moves slower in the cold. All right. So you're all molasses. <laughs> 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 and uh, so a few more coming on. Trish I see Brady. him. Hello, Trish. Hello, Cindy. Good to see you on here tonight as well. So the signal is going. I see people are starting to now catch on with us. So praise the Lord for that. Hello, Tony. Good to see you on here as well. As she says, good evening to our TOB family. Love when everybody posts to the family because remember that it's not just us that you're communicating with but people see you online as well so you can address each other hello miss jean god bless you i'm grateful that you are here as well and uh so karen i had a marvelous day today would not trade for anything tired but yes so we were blessed today as uh miss karen was taking care of her great great grandson here at church it was awesome not great um, great great. Just great i'm sorry great sorry great not <laughs> he's great. great not great 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 no he's great. a great hello riga Wonderful. good to see you on here as well tonight so we had a bunch check on and say hello and then the numbers went well down so maybe people got cut out who knows what no. happened and how's it goes all right so we are grateful so we're going to go ahead and jump into it so we can keep you going uh in our with our study and keep you uh, trekking forward in the Word of God here tonight. So always blessed to see our friends, our family joining with us. What an encouragement okay. as we are taking this time to engage with you. You're taking time to re-engage with us. What a blessing. So here we go. Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Hanging with Pastors A and J. I'm Pastor Anthony. Pastor Jen. And man, we are blessed again to see you on here tonight. We hope that you uh, are doing well, we are praying for you on a daily basis, praying that you would continue to trust in the Lord, that you're staying healthy, staying safe, and continuing to just follow uh, the Word of God and continuing to seek God's will in everything we do and how, especially how we navigate the days that we're living in. We definitely need God's uh, inspiration, God's leading. And, you know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs that God makes their plans, but God directs our footsteps. And don't we need the Lord directing our footsteps today? No doubt. So anyway, so we are thankful. Hello, Joanne. Good to see you. And Karen on here. So hopefully I uh, have seen everybody. If I haven't seen you, somebody say hello out there, somebody, so we can catch you on as well with us. So let me go ahead and pray. We're going to jump into the study. All right, Father, we love you. 
God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for our time of engagement tonight. I pray that you bless the word. And Father, as we discuss some very serious subjects tonight, I pray, God, that your anointing would be with us, the Holy Spirit would lead us, and that, God, you would just uh, help us all grow closer to you through the learning of the word of God. So God bless everybody tonight, I pray in Jesus name and each one together said. Amen. Uh, I'm going to warn y'all, he's had some coffee. <laughs> I said uh, here uh, during our prayer service that we had, I was commenting uh, that even Starbucks has gotten a little more into the oh. Christmas season. <laughs> so congratulations. Yeah, yeah, congratulations to them as last year they went for the full red cup. Uh, you know, but I still drank some coffee. I like it. I don't, I don't, whatever. People do what they do, right? <laughs> but hey, you know, it says carry the Mary, carry the Mary, whatever they call that. But it looks a little more festive this year. So congratulations to a little more festivity. Well, know. and they used Mary. Like in Merry and Christmas. Mary. So maybe they were just borderline. Or like there. maybe Mary, did you know? Wrong, wrong spelling. Wrong spelling. Okay, no problem. All right. At least it's not Mary, M A R R Y. You two look so good and happy together. Well, thank you, Riga. I appreciate well, that. Because we are happy together. And, Aww. Aww. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not going to get anything. It's frozen. I'm not getting anything. Oh, her signal must be frozen. The rest of us are on. Yeah, we're getting it. So just reboot um, it. I would fire say, it up. Restart. Well, if it's it, saying, it should give you. Should I just mention to her to refresh? Well, she probably heard me. She oh, hopefully oh. refresh. Okay. So hopefully she's she's back on. I see people kind of going back and forth, and that's probably because of the power outages and all that. But let's jump into it. And I've already prayed. So, all right. So tonight we're going to get into our study and we're going to continue our trek through the Psalms as we jumped in early on in this time that we went on Facebook live in our Bible study Wednesday nights. And we're still trekking forward through unknown territory, but we know the word of God. We study the word of God. So we bring in the word of God to us that never changes. So I'm thankful for God's word that endures forever. No matter what goes on in this world, God's word will keep propelling us forward. So we're going to continue learning tonight the word of God. And tonight we're going to dive into Psalm numero uno. Psalm wow. one we're going into. The very beginning. We're going into Psalm one here tonight. And we're going to, we're going to see how this Psalm powerful Psalm kind of launching the Psalm, the Psalms forward kind of sets the precedence for the for uh, giving us a strong contrast and and here it goes of those who follow God and those who simply don't so we are going to have a contrast tonight of those who choose to follow God and those who don't in the psalm it's interesting how psalm 1 launches right into it before it jumps into all of the life changing activity uh you know historical facts uh people's experiences that we've been talking about all this time i mean it jumps right in and says exactly who it is that's going to be blessed by what god's word tells us and who it is that is not and it's really going to jump in there. And I mean, it's crazy because listen, in life, it, 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 it's as it's simple as this, okay? If I can break it down and say it's very simple, in life, we're given two choices, two choices in life. Mm -hmm. Believe in God, receive Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's one choice. Or the other choice, flip the coin, the other side of the coin says we deny God and ultimately if we deny God, the Bible says that we will be cast away from his presence forever. So we believe in Jesus. We believe in God. We go to heaven. We're with God forever. He wants us there. And he wants all. And he wishes, the Bible tells us that he wishes none should perish. None should be separated from him. But that all should be with him forever. But the very fact of the matter is, not everybody will make that choice. Not everybody will consider God or receive Christ's salvation. A sad but true reality that we live in. But I say there's two choices in life, accept God or deny God. Mm -hmm. There's just simply no middle ground. Mm -hmm. There's no gray area when it comes to our eternal life, to our salvation. 
People might come to a point in their life where they say, well, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. I just don't believe in any of that. So I just don't subscribe to it. So I'll just go through life in that gray area. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what we believe or what people choose to believe or not. There's the matter of the truth. And the truth is what God says in his word. The truth is what God has spoken to us. So whether we choose to embrace, believe God or not, that simply does not take away that there is an ultimate truth and the truth is in God's word. I'm making say amen to that. And I hope that you're with me right here because listen, yeah. there is no middle ground because Jesus taught us this and look at, let's jump in before we get into our Psalm. I'm going to kind of set us straight here because these are some very serious facts and some serious uh, realities in scripture that I'm going to talk about tonight that we really have to be thinking about when we come to talk to people or encourage people think about the Christmas season and why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come? The Bible says Jesus came to save us. And why? Well, we're going to learn a little bit the reason why he made the choice, the decision to come here to save us, to give us the opportunity to be made right with God. So look at here. But this is the choice where I tell you that Jesus told us that there is no middle ground. It says you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many for the many who choose that way. So Jesus right here said that there is a narrow gate to heaven, which we talked about to the kingdom of God, but to the highway to hell is broad. So the way to separation from God. And when we use the word hell, obviously we understand that that is just eternal separation from God, eternal damnation. Uh, and, and, and if I was to describe uh, what my definition of hell would be is simply separated from God's love and God's grace and God's mercy. We don't even have a fathom, a clue of what that actually means, but that is what it, but Jesus is telling us that the way to the kingdom of God is narrow, but the way to uh, separation from God is broad and many unfortunately choose that. Look what he says right here as he goes on to say, but the gateway to life is very narrow. The road is difficult and only a few find it. So again, Jesus is reiterating the fact that, hey, the gateway to the kingdom of heaven is narrow and it's a difficult road and only a few find it. Whereas earlier he said many fall away and take the broad road. They take the, the road that leads away from God. And that is an unfortunate stat uh, reality that, that Jesus himself spoke about. So it's just incredible to think that of why it is that people would take a path that leads them away from God. I'm still stupefied over that. That's my word. But I'm still, I, I, I get that, 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 that thought of why is that? I can only go back to my experience BC before Christ in my life where I was so full of myself and thinking that I had all the answers and that I didn't need anything else. And, and yeah, okay, maybe I recognize God was there, but I was still doing my own thing. And I wasn't religious. I wasn't churchy. I wasn't Christian. I just, you know, okay, God is there. That's fine. As long as he does what I want, we're good. Well, that's not the reality. And then when God came to me and spoke to me and drew me in, well, at that point, I had a choice to make. I had a choice to make. And Thankfully, I chose Christ in my life. You know, as you just described that, you described yourself as being on the middle ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how That's many right. times, do, right. but you know, think about that. How many times do people think that, oh, I'm, I'm not extreme. I'm not churchy, but I'm not, I'm not. Well, they use the term, I haven't killed anyone. Right. People mm -hmm. say, that. you know, I, I'm, I'm not churchy, but I haven't killed anyone. So I'm good. Right. Like there's a middle, but there's really not. Yeah. Yeah. So the way you just described that, that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah. And, and as Riga said, no middle ground. And that's true. That agrees. Yeah. I'm not sure where Karen said no rare form tonight. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's a a bad or a good thing. Uh, it's it, it, it's simply the word of God. And well, if we want to call it challenging, uh, rare form, I don't know. I, um, I think it's good. I hope so. But anyways, um, it, it, it's a form tonight of telling us uh, what the word of God wrote uh anyways all right so let's go on so we understand what jesus taught now right we understand uh that there is a choice mm -hmm. to be with god or not and as i've told you it's simply as that now for those who choose to go against god 
for those who choose to go against God, listen, and for and and, and they refuse to to not believe in Jesus. Okay. Romans 1.18 says, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So God will deal with that. God will deal with it with those. And when the Bible talks about wicked people, what it's talking about is ungodly. So those who are considered wicked are those who are ungodly godly so those who simply suppress the truth through their wickedness so god will show his anger from heaven against all sinful wicked people so this is against those who simply choose not to believe in jesus they will face obviously god's anger and that is something that obviously i never wanted you we remember when people yeah. would say they they would say something look up and think oh okay is a lightning bolt from heaven going to come strike me down and one thing that i would say this is don't misunderstand god's grace and simply because he doesn't hit us with a lightning bolt when we mess up or when we jack up don't misunderstand his grace for his approval because yeah. a lot of people think that, oh, I got away with it, so God must approve of what I'm doing. Well, no, that is not the truth. It's simply that God's grace and his mercy is allowing us to try to make it right and giving us more time to make it right. So for those who choose to go against God and not believe, well, look at Romans 1.18. That's just a simple re reality. But for those who choose to believe, for those who choose to believe, we jump into Romans chapter 3. It says we're made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who they are. That is such a blessing to me. That is an absolute blessing because it says no matter who they are. And man, I, I always like to say that if I can get saved, if I can come to Christ, if I can turn my life around for God, anybody can. I know it to be true. As Pastor Jennifer mentioned, I was on middle ground. Middle ground is very dangerous because you think you're set, you think you're okay, but the reality is we're not. So there's a choice that has to be made for God or not. All right, so, and it goes on to say this, for every, it says, uh, go back in here, there we go. For everyone is sin, we all fall short of glorious, God's glorious standard. So we understand the Bible says that we're all sinners. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Uh, standard. And it goes on to say, yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sin. And then it goes on in part in verse 25, for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. It says people are made right with God when they believe Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood so this is happens for those who choose to believe and remember we understand that bible teaches us that all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of god so when people say i don't need a savior i don't need uh you know i'm not a sinner i don't do anything bad and as as you mentioned uh earlier you know people think that well i didn't you know i haven't done of course right. really bad things to people so i must be a good person well the according to whose standards we must understand it's according to god's holy standards that all people have sinned and fall short of his glory so all people need god's forgiveness and in order to receive god's forgiveness he did this through christ but it says this we are made right with god after what when we believe yeah. When we believe. So in order to receive God's grace, in order to obtain God's mercy in our life, we must believe that Jesus gave his life for us by the shedding of his blood. You know, as I was thinking, it's amazing how people can place so much importance on what happens here on earth and plan so many things in life. We plan so many retirement, you know, all of these things we try to put in order for what we call the end of our life or the time, but yet often disregard the greatest, most important decision that we need to make. And what is that? Where do we want to spend our eternity? Where do we want to spend our eternity? Do we want to spend our eternity with God in heaven? Or 
do we want to be separated from God forever in hell? I mean, it's as simple as that. And we don't have to be separated from God. Sure, you know, today, many people shy away from discussing the word hell as an offense. In fact, many teachers, preachers, they don't want to offend people by mentioning the word hell. But reality, hell is just a place that exists for the devil and his minions or his demons. And it was not a place that was created for God's creation for humanity. That is not a place that was created for us. So obviously God does not want us down there. But yet we should not shy away from still understanding that, that hell is not a bad word. It is a place, well, unless you use it in a bad right. context, but it is a place because heaven and hell are very real places that exist where people will spend eternity. It's either or. And to choose God, to choose Jesus, is to choose life eternal in heaven with God. So we understand that heaven is for all believers and, and hell is for the enemy of God, Satan, for his demons, and unfortunately, for all those that will simply deny God's salvation through Christ Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is what we call now the impardonable sin. Yeah. This is what's called the impardonable sin. Many people uh, get kind of a kind of a, a a little twisted when it comes to what we call the unpardonable sin. Let me explain. Matt, Mark three twenty eight and twenty nine say, "I tell you the truth, all sin and blasphemy can be forgiven." This is verse twenty eight. So Jesus says, "All sin and blasphemy can be forgiven." But, and him speaking even of himself, against himself, against God, but anyone who blasphemes, blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is a sin with eternal consequences. Now, what does that mean? We call it the unpardonable sin. Simply put, it is the Holy Spirit that convicts a person of their sin and draws them to God for forgiveness. So the Bible tells us that when Jesus ascended to heaven, that he said, I will send you another, which means like him. Remember, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? So Jesus, we know God is a spirit in heaven. We know Jesus came from heaven, ascended to this earth, was clothed in flesh, the Christmas uh, uh, biblical historic uh, history that Jesus came clothed in flesh, right? Became Emmanuel, God with us. Why we know that? In fact, right now in the season. And then Jesus would spend about 33 years in public ministry here, clothed in flesh, and then he would ascend back to the Father. But in doing so, he guaranteed his believers, his followers, that he would send the Holy Spirit to comfort, to help, to strengthen, but that also the Holy Spirit would convict the world, convict the world, not just the one at a time as Jesus was able to, in his ministry, he could only reach just like we would, like people but he would convict the world of their sin and their need for a savior. Now, blasphemy, uh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is exactly what Jesus says, because the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts the world that tells each person in their spirit, in their hearts, that they need a savior. They need God's forgiveness. So to deny the leading of the Holy Spirit is to simply deny God. To deny God's salvation through Jesus Christ. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is prompting us 
bringing us, convicting us, and causing us to come to the Father for his forgiveness through Christ Jesus. And when we deny that, it says right there, anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven because what we're simply doing in essence is we are denying the salvation that comes in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that there is no other name under heaven or between, under or with men that one can be saved. That is only through Christ Jesus. So to understand that refusing to have faith in God will sadly keep people from entering into God's kingdom. So now one question that everyone always asks, do I have anybody still with me? A oh, few, yeah. I have a few of you. Okay. This is intense teaching tonight. Okay. And you're thinking Christmas, but this is why Christmas exists. Mm -hmm. Do we understand that? This is why Christmas exists. Why for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He sent his son down to earth. Jesus agreed to come because they, we needed a, a savior. That's why the babe went to the manger. That's why the babe grew up. That's why the ministry of Jesus to make a way. That's that's why he went to the cross. That is the Christmas story. That is the Christmas history for us. So understand it. But the question is this. Some, some worry about this. Uh, many times when we talk about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit against the Holy Spirit, where Jesus says that that cannot be forgiven. And some people worry about that because they're worried. Have I committed the unforgivable uh, sin? Yeah. So some people are, even Christians, they think, wait a minute, if there's a sin that cannot be forgiven, have I done that? Have I committed that sin? And the fact of the matter is this, if you are worried about it, you have not committed the <laughs> unforgivable sin. You say, can it be that simple? Absolutely. Because here it is. If you have a concern about God whatsoever, you are not out of a place where God can't save you. Bottom okay. line. Yep. Bottom line. And if you've already received Christ and you were thinking, God, have I done this? Let me tell you something. No, you have not, saint. No, you have not, loved one. You are. We all fall short of the God's glory. We all mess up at times. That is not the unforgivable sin. That is not the unpardonable sin. Okay, that is not that. This is simply what Jesus is talking about, is that the Holy Spirit's knocking at your heart and you simply say, no. I will not believe in God. I will not believe in Christ. I want nothing to do with that. That, my friends, is the unforgivable sin. All right. So now here in our psalm, and that was our leading in. So here, and because the, the psalm is short, but the psalm is going to hit some really big subjects that go along with exactly what I had to lead in here to understand why it went this way and how serious of an issue that this is and how it will bless us who believe because we're going to hear the blessings of those who believe but for those who not believe and whether maybe you're on here tonight and and you simply don't believe in Jesus or you're catching this at a later time let me encourage you to to listen to what we're talking about here so that you can make a decision uh to to really turn to God and, and, and really receive God's salvation in our lives. So in this psalm, if you're still with us, and a they few are, of you are, all you. right, all right, we get a strong glimpse of the results of a person's choice. So here we're going to go, and maybe probably some of you have already jumped into it and read a little bit, and you're kind of going exactly what I'm talking about. Hello, Bill. Good to see you on here. Did I miss anybody else? I know Johnny's on here, so God bless you guys. So here we go. Uh, Psalm 1-1. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. So understand here, now we're in a strong contrast and blessings, but God is is getting quite serious with us here about how it is that we are to conduct ourselves as believers and be careful of what we do or how we engage with the things of the world, especially people of the world who don't quite believe the way 
that we choose to believe. You remember when you didn't believe in Christ and how you engaged with others before who might have had faith and you didn't? I remember growing up in high school. I remember what we said. I remember the jokes. I remember all of that. And so we must be careful now that if, if we believe right now, God's word is telling us. So the joys uh, who do not follow the advice of the wicked. And again, the word wicked here in other translations, it simply means the ungodly or those who do not have faith in God. That's who is considered wicked because if sinners are wicked, the things we do against God are wicked. So this is how this translation breaks it. I think it's straightforward. I think it's exactly what it is. But here we have wise counsel. We have strong contrast and real results that are given to us. It says the joys of those, or in another translation would say, blessed is the person. Um, so to understand the word blessed or the word joy and what it truly means and what it indicates here is the word means real happiness in all areas of our lives. So when you are truly joyful in the Lord, when you are truly a blessed person, remember another word for blessed can be used as happy, mm -hmm. but happy is so limited because this word truly en encompasses every single area in our lives when we say we're blessed that encompasses our physical our emotional our spiritual everything it encompasses the whole enchilada when it comes to our lives so you know i'm not just blessed i am blessed of god means that god is working in every part of our lives so it means this the word in the original Hebrew, when we say joys or blessed are those, um, it, it really means it's, it, it's a person who experiences the full measure of joy, peace, and prosperity with nothing withheld from God. So, I mean, when you look at it that way, mm -hmm. and I can sense that. I can sense God's joy, his peace in my life. I can sense prosperity of how God blesses all my needs. And, and, and if I'm honest with you, God, I don't deserve it, but God gives me a lot of my wants too. And if you're honest, God does the same for you too. That's a, that's a, that's a wonderful prosperity, but not a prosperity and we get whatever we want but a prosperity that God blesses us with our needs and overflows into our wants. That is a real uh, uh, life filled with blessings from God. So all the joys are blessed are the people who do not follow. Now listen to what it says, though. You will be blessed. You will be joyful if, mm -hmm. right, if you do not follow the advice of the wicked. So let's let's begin to talk about this, this action here now of what the Word of God tells us. This action describes a person who makes a choice to receive God's blessing. So if I want to be joyful, if I want to be blessed, if I want to be filled with the happiness that comes from the totality of God working in my life, then I cannot follow the advice of the wicked. The choice not to follow the advice or live in the ways of the wicked or ungodly. So this person chooses to live in joy by not following the advice or living in the same way that those uh, who are considered wicked or ungodly before God. And you know, you know that you you know the way it is. It's how we lived BC. It's how we lived before Christ. It's how we lived prior to God coming into our life. I don't know about you, but God's pruned a whole lot of things out of my life. So when we uh, choose not to follow the advice, we choose not to listen to those who would speak against God or try to lead us in the ways of God, against God or in the ways of the wicked. So we have to be careful on what we do, meaning that we refuse to partake in any form of denial against God. We refuse to partake in any denial against God. And your denial against God not only comes from your verbal speaking, but it also comes in our actions. So we refuse to partake in anything verbally or in action that would show a denial against God. God and I can explain that in a in a whole different a whole lot of levels here but I won't because I think you understand exactly what I'm talking about 
So, and it's interesting here because look at what the scripture, how it breaks it down. It says follow, which means kind of when you, when you're following, it's kind of like you're walking with because in other interpretations or other translations would say walking with who do not walk uh, with the wicked. And then it goes on to say standing. And then it goes on to say sitting. So notice the progression of you walk with them, you stop with them, and now you sit with them. So there's a progression that it talks about that kind of draws you deeper into the ways of the ungodly that we have to be careful. So it's kind of like, it's like they're doing, you're kind of tagging along. And then pretty soon you're part of that conversation that's happening. And then you're now actively you're participating in it. In in it. it. And, but that's how sin happens. It is. It, it it's is. it's like, oh, that looks intriguing. Well, James tells us it starts yeah. in the mind with but, a thought. Right, because it's it looks it looks good and then pretty good. It it's sounding good and then now it's part of your life and that's right. You're partaking. That's yeah. right. So a lot of times we start the journey with maybe somebody who doesn't believe or what they would call the ungodly mm -hmm. by good intentions to say, well, I'm going to work in their life. I'm going to help. And then a lot of times the opposite is they begin to kind of draw us back to what we used to be BC. So we have to be careful if we want to live that blessed, joyful life with the complete uh, fulfillment in God. We cannot follow or walk in the ways of uh, the wicked. It says, and it goes on to say, or stand around with sinners. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, so we can't stand with or be around people long enough to be negatively influenced or to indulge in the ways of the ungodly in any fashion. Yeah. Remember, the longer we hang out with those who are unequally yoked from what we believe, we have to be careful that we don't begin to indulge. And I'll, and I'll give you a quick story of how that happened so quickly. I know a lot of people and believers who are, are, are come to church and, and they want to follow God. And I've talked to a lot of men, mostly men, that say, but when I go to work, I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys who don't believe in Christ the way I do, who don't go to church like I do, and they are flipping and flooping and cussing and doing all the things I used to do. And then the longer that I sit with them, the longer mm -hmm. that I stand with them, the longer that I engage with them, I find myself beginning to talk the way they are or the way that I used to, which I know is not honoring to God. Mm -hmm. So this is why it says, blessed is the person who, who you don't follow their advice, you don't walk in their ungodly ways or ways that they might deny God, but you got to be careful that you don't stand around with sinners and engage with what they're doing. Be careful when we are engaging with others that might be talking in ways that are contrary to the things of God or saying things that are, you know, if you're a guy and you're sitting in a group of guys and you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, defamation of women, or, or or saying jokes that are talking bad things about this or that and that, be careful and get away from that because all it's going to do is end up robbing you of your blessings because you're going to engage back into what they uh, or what God doesn't want you to do. And yeah. scripture talks about that deeply. So we have to be careful that we're not standing so long with somebody that it begins to negatively influence us, nor... It says, or join in with mockers. Another word uh, from translations is to sit with those uh, that are mocking uh, the things of God. So we have to be careful that we're not sitting too long, joining in, breaking bread, and doing things that's going to cause us to blatantly disrespect God. That's what it's talking about here. It doesn't mean you can't go sit down with people, uh, with non-believers and have a good meal and have good friends that are non-believers and don't believe it. It's, that's not what it's saying. No. What it's saying is that if, if the conversation or the actions or the verbiage or anything begins to come against God, you got to get out of the way. You got to get out of there because it will negatively influence you and it will rob your blessings. Yeah. If it says here, the blessed are those, blessed is the man or the person who walks with the God or joy of those or the happiness of those who do all of this, then if you don't do this, the other side of the coin, 
we could be robbed of our blessings. And that's not what we want to do. I know a lot of people who come back and say, man, I got involved in saying this or doing this. And man, I feel so guilty uh, that I shouldn't have been doing that or saying that. And man, thank God that he calls us uh, in, in, in 1 John to confess back to him and he'll forgive us when we mess up. How many are thankful for that? That God says, if we truly repent, he'll forgive us. You know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking that like, why, why is it so easy for even the, the people who are the strongest Christians? Why is it so easy for us to get pulled back in and, and taken in? I, even if we're going with the best intention, I'm going to win them over. I'm going to just be the light. I'm going to be that. But I think the reason is we are, we have a sinful nature. We have that in us. And so it just gets drawn back up. It gets drawn back into our, our, our being because it's, it's well, where we it's, came from. It's our from. sinful nature. It's that sinful nature. Because it's in there. That's right. And so I would think if, if you're feeling like you need to witness to somebody, don't go alone. Don't do this alone because you we'll keep got, accountability. You, you got to keep that accountability. And, yeah. and there's, you know, where two or three are gathered. So take two and Jesus with you. I'm going to say the chances are better. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would agree with that. And though in Christ, we are new creations. The old has passed away. The new has begun. But the reality is, is that there is that sinful nature that is still mm -hmm. kind of deep inside of us that we know we're new, but how many know that just live in life, that that old, uh, that old person in us, BC, wants to surface all the time and those thoughts come into your mind and those actions come in and you remember what you used to say when somebody cut you off, you used to quickly go to flip and flipping and now you're like, wait a minute, no, I can't do that. That's not the right way to go, but you automatically want to go there. It's because that sinful nature wants to come out of us at times. And so we have to be careful to guard ourselves. And that's why uh, Paul would tell us that we need to take every thought captive. Yeah. That and, and even to the, the, he's speaking to believers that we need to take those thoughts captive so that we don't put them into action, which would rob us of our blessings ultimately in God. I'm not talking about robbing us of our salvation. Now, don't get me wrong no. here. I'm not talking about a salvation issue or losing your salvation. That's not what we're talking about here, okay? What we're talking about here is those who will get robbed of their blessings and their daily blessings with God and that full, complete, as I mentioned that happiness in all of our areas, the joy, the peace, the prosperity, all we can rob ourselves of those in our life if we choose to engage with things that are ungodly. Again, I'm not talking about a salvation issue here. So don't don't try to misquote what I'm what I'm trying to convey to you tonight. But what I'm saying is we need the blessings and we want the blessings and we this is how the Bible is teaching us to live. So that's what we need to do. And I see this right here. I see this right here is we just we just can't ignore um, a person's ungodliness. We just can't simply ignore other people's ungodliness like it doesn't exist because many times, sadly, um, you know, the reality is um, Bible tells us Jesus teaches us this. I mean, the reality is sometimes we just need to separate ourselves from the ungodly influences in our life. Yep. There, and, and can I just be candid with you? And And, and that's it. That if we truly want to develop ourselves in our faith, grow in the things of God, receive all of God's blessings, there will be times when we have to just separate ourselves from those ungodly influences that do nothing but drag us down. And, and that's a hard thing to say. But I did lose friends. I did lose connections when I began to walk with Christ in the church because we just didn't have anything in common anymore. And thankfully, some of those connections I had came uh, to Christ and I was able to lead them to the Lord, but some of them, I don't know what happened to them. <coughs> so that is obviously between them and God. But, you know, because the thing is, we don't want to do anything that risks losing our own blessing or even compromising our own walk with God. We certainly don't want to do that. Okay. So let's move on. And I was going to say, it's going to be easy to identify those people that you need to separate from because they're going to be the ones that after you've had some time with them, you're going, man, I need to repent from, you know, I'm not feeling good about myself. I know that I did some things or said some things that I shouldn't have said. 
And if you're always coming from that person or group of people or whatever, and you're always feeling like you did something wrong or you need to repent from it, that's... Yeah, it might be time to check that relationship. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Uh, I would say it like this. Before you end a friendship, you know, mm -hmm. or, or disconnect from somebody like that, why not have that candid conversation with them that simply says, you know what? Um, I'm a Christian. I'm trying to follow the things of the Lord. And if I'm going to hang with you, if I'm going to be, you know, around you, then, then I need you to respect my boundaries. And, you know, we're not asking anybody to get on board and be religious. It's not our job. Our job is just to share the light and let the Holy Spirit work it out. But you can, you can share that with people and simply say, if you can respect my boundaries, if you can respect my faith that I have, hey, we can hang. But don't, mm -hmm. you know, don't discredit my God or come against my God because that's just not going to fly. Um, but I find it so interesting how people can talk negatively about God a lot easier than we talk positively about God. Mm -hmm. People can say all these weird, you know, innuendos and all these weird phrases and all these cuss phrases and all that stuff. And sometimes we just kind of stand back and we just kind of say, OK, well, you know, blessed are the peacemakers. And, I, and yes, I taught on that. And that's true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek. And OK, yes, Jesus does teach that. But you know what? There's times when you can just simply say, you know what? Um, that's not cool. And you know what? Eh, that's not right. Mm -hmm. You know, you really shouldn't talk about God that way. And. Say it in love and, well, whatever it is. And a lot of times if you're just outright with them about your standing, they kind of change their tone around you sometimes. It can. Not all the time. It can. It can. <laughs> but remember, somebody had to tell you. Yes. Somebody had to tell me. Mm -hmm. And I had to put on my big boy pants and I had to listen to the truth and then I made a choice. And some people make an opposite choice. That's what we're talking about here tonight. But some people make the right choice. And if choice. it wasn't for that person stepping out and saying it. Yeah. You know, and some people are going to get butthurt over it. If that's what I can say. Uh, <laughs> well, you just did. I did. Sorry. <laughs> but some people get that way about it. Mm -hmm. and they get all offended and stuff like that. And you're just like, hey, I'm just, but if you do it in love, if you do it with the right attitude, mm -hmm. people, remember I told you before, and I've said this before in the, in the church, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Right. So if, if people know that you care, they'll take, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, weight to the words you talk about God. And especially if you tell them, hey, you know, I need you to back off of the way you're talking about my God because it's just not conducive to our relationship. And it really offends me. And mm -hmm. simple enough. There you go. If it offends my God, it offends me. And that's just the way it is because God's first. That's just the way it is. It is in my book. All right. Now in strong contrast, let's jump in. Verse two. But now we're in strong contrast to what we just talked about. So we just talked about, remember, it kind of goes on together. So all the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Now strong uh, contrast to uh, following the advice of the ungodly. So now strong contrast to that. It says, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Listen, the greatest way to keep our blessings flowing is to stay regularly engaged in God's word. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, if we truly want to stay engaged in God, in the blessings, and allow the blessings to flow into our life, and we stay regularly engaged in God's word. You see, the real blessings come into a person's life when they choose to do uh, uh, more for God than against God. So we need to choose uh, to do uh, more for God. Um, it's interesting to elaborate, but I'm looking at my time, so I'm gonna, I have to get going here. But in this case... The blessed life delights themselves in God's word. So bottom line, mm -hmm. in this case, those who are blessed in their lives, they simply delight themselves in God's word, which means that we engage in God's word regularly out of enjoyment rather than obligation. So we choose to enjoy God's word. But a lot of times we get into God's word and we think, oh, I have to read the Bible. No, you don't. That's not a requirement of your salvation. That's not a requirement. But if you truly want to get the full blessings of God, you will delight 
in the law of the Lord. Delight in the word of God. Meditate it on it day and night. Speak the word of God into your life. Pray the word of God into your life. And just think about God. The ones who are truly blessed in God's word are the one who continue to meditate on it day and night. Reading and studying our Bible will bring us a strong satisfaction to the core of our very being. It will give us purpose. God's word gives us purpose, gives us clarification, gives us hope, gives us strength, gives us guidance. Uh, God's word is meant to feed our very souls, the life-giving, life-sustaining, life-improving truth that endures forever. This is just a, a glimpse of what God's word can do. So we are those who are joyful in the Lord, are blessed people, are the ones who delight in the law of the Lord, meditate on day and night. We have to be careful that we don't disregard our regular uh, interaction with God's word on a regular basis, or else it will be very difficult to grow in the things of God. And we know that Sunday mornings at church and Wednesday nights in Bible study is just not enough to grow our own personal lives in God. We've got to engage and study for ourselves, but that's when you receive the blessings in the law of God the Lord. Joshua 1 8, the, the Bible tells us here in Joshua, God would speak and he says, study, and sorry about the lights on here, but it says, study this book of instruction continually, meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. So understanding he's telling Joshua to study the book of instruction or the Bible, the word of God that they would have um, at that point, um, the, the, the continually meditate on a day and night, just like the psalmist said to us, so that you'll be sure to obey it. So the more you learn, the more you can obey. And then listen to what God tells Joshua. Um, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So understand there is a, you know, uh, basically a condition mm -hmm. on prospering and succeeding. If I see it, I see it as a condition. And the condition is if you study the Bible and do what it says, actually mm. obey everything mm. yeah okay so when we obey the word of god but how do you know the word of god you got to read it to obey it but when you do that only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do so he was setting up joshua to to lead the children of israel following from moses to lead the children of israel into the promised land so god would equip him to succeed equip him to have the victory and said, hey, just as Moses did, you need to read the word of God, study it, do everything that I've told you to do. You will succeed and you will prosper, which is very interesting because our next uh, verse in Psalm 1-3, again, kind of talks about this as well. So next we read of the results of our actions. So when we choose not to engage with the ungodly, right, not to allow them influence our walk with God, when we choose to meditate on the word of God day and night, as the Bible tells us, here's the results of delighting ourselves in the Lord. And it gives us, you know, there's always a comparison yeah. um, or kind of a like or, or what they would call um, um, simile, uh, like a simile um, in the Bible. And here's what it likens us to. They are like trees. So we're talking about the people who engage with God's word, exactly what I just talked about. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their lives, uh, their leaves will never wither and they will prosper in all they do. So as we look now, just like we read in the promise to Joshua, we show, we're shown the results of living a life here by the psalmist here that is devoted to God and his word. It says here, we will then be like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Our leaves will never wither and we will prosper in all we do. Comparing the godly life to a strong tree. I like it's just a simple, strong tree. You ever seen them big old giant oaks, man, them strong trees that the winds come and everything, and they just, I mean, they just don't go down. They take it and they go. Mm -hmm. But thinking about if you're a tree, to be planted by the riverbank, to be planted in a place where all the necessary resources, the nutrients of the water, and everything is feeding you. And what happens when you get the nutrients from the water feeding and all the nutrients from the ground feeding your tree? What happens? Your roots get strong. Now your roots go strong. They go 
deep into that ground, which makes that tree unmovable, unbreakable. So when we look at us as engaging or the person of God engaging, the more we engage with the word of God, it says we will be planted as such and our roots will go deep into the things of God, deep into our faith. And we too will become unmovable and fully receive the resources that are necessary to keep us growing. Remember, a tree can only grow as strong as the roots go down deep into the earth to sustain uh, the life-giving necessary resources and water and nutrients. That's exactly like us digging deep into the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God so our roots go deep and it holds us strong so that whatever comes our way, whatever storms may blow our way, whatever pandemics that we might face, if our roots are deep, strong in the things of God, we too will not be shaken. Oh, sure, we might blow a little bit. We might sway a little bit, just like the trees do in the wind we've been so, have dealing with around here in our, in our area uh, as of late. But look at those big trees. They're moving. They're swaying. But if they have a good root, they are not going down. So here, the godly life is like a strong tree planted, firmly fixed where we need to be, having the resources we need to grow and bear good fruit regularly. And what does that allow the tree to do? To do exactly what it was created to do, to bear good fruit every season. That's the purpose of the tree, to grow, to do its purpose, to bear good fruit in season. So therefore, they're fulfilling. Likewise with our life, we meditate on the Word of God, we live the Word of God, our roots go down, and we too will fulfill the purpose that God created for us. I like the part where it says in each season. Because a lot of times, we hear people say, oh, I've been there, done that in church. I'm, you know, I'm now... I, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm taking in cause I, but wait a minute. It says you're bearing fruit in each season. There's you, you don't ever stop bearing fruit. You're yeah. continually supposed to bear fruit in each season yeah. and everybody has seasons of life that we go through. So whether it's a good season, a bad season, a, a young season, an older season of uh, whatever the season, it doesn't matter. You're still supposed to bear fruit. And I think this is the scripture that a lot of people, um, you know, they talk about and the, the Bible doesn't talk about retirement mm -hmm. right there. There is no stopping. There is no, I've uh, been there, done that. There's none of that. Yeah. You are to bear fruit in each season. And I think about like right now as a, as a world, right? We're in this season of, ah, pandemic. Ew, that's the season we're in. And people are like, we're not, you know, we're just hunkering down. We're holding in there. We're making it through. Yeah. Ah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. We're not supposed to stop. We got to keep bearing fruit. No, nope. We got to keep going. Let me tell you something. The church is still growing throughout that's the world. Right. People are still getting saved. All right. Exactly what Jesus told John uh, the Baptist when he was in jail. And he says, are you the one? And he said, you go tell his disciples were asking Jesus. He says, you go tell John that the blind are seeing, that the deaf are hearing, that the lame are walking and that people are still getting saved. And let me tell you something. In the middle of a pandemic, people are still drawing closer to God. People are still being strengthened in every season. We mm -hmm. will continue to bear fruit. That's what we're called to do. Okay. So, and, and thank you for that wonderful insight. And this is simply a life that is dedicated to God. And because of that reason, just like he told Joshua, just like what it says here, this life will prosper and be ultimately successful in all they do in every season. And I like how Pastor Jennifer brought out that clarification in each season. And it's interesting to, to dissect that a little bit. And again, uh, we, we don't have all that time, but I'm, I'm sure you can chew on it tonight. But that's that's good. That's a good thought. All right. So let's let's finish this off so I can get you out of here again. Good stuff here. I hope you're blessed. All right. So verse four and five. OK, contrast again here. We're confronted. Remember, I told you there's two choices right in life. All right. So we've been talking about some tr tremendous blessing just a moment ago, mm -hmm. but here's a strong uh, 
confronta- uh, we're confronted with a strong eye-opening comparison, but not the wicked. But not the wicked. <laughs> All of those blessings that I, we just talked about yeah. are not for the wicked. They're not for the ungodly. They're not for those who won't believe in God. It's simply not going to happen. The Word of God is telling us. This is an eye-opening experience right here, man. This is stuff we need to hear. I want blessings in my life, but if I don't choose Christ in my life, it's not going to happen. Sure, people will still be successful in certain capacities. People will be taken care of. Sure, you'll see people getting raises. Sure, you'll see people attaining. And we see million and billionaires all day long. But you know what? The reality is they're just not going to be fulfilled with the true joy that is in the Lord. As Andra said earlier, this true joy comes from the word of God, as I think is simple. Delighting in God's word opens the door to joy. That's exactly truth. That's exactly truth. But it says, but not for the wicked. So all that stuff we talked about, not for the wicked. They're, and, and listen to what God says, man. I didn't say this. God did. They're like worthless chaff. Chaff is like this stuff that just blows away off of in, in the wind, scattered by the wind. Chaff is something that's insignificant, doesn't mean anything, has no purpose. And then the chaff on the wheat is when they are they are threshing it mm-hmm. and, and doing that. The chaff is coming off and then the wind blows. That's the stuff that's no good. Just go away. Mm-hmm. Because what I'm the, the essence of what I really need is still there. And that's what the Bible is co- liking it <laughs> to understand that. So they're like the wicked, the ungodly, like worthless chaff. And, and I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but it's simply what the word of God is saying to God. If we don't choose God, then we're worthless to him because we're not going to do nothing for him. We're not going to bear good fruit for God. So that's what it is. And then, of course, it gets even worse. It gets worse. They'll be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. Oh, my goodness. Are we kidding here? Somebody open up your eyes and your heart to God. Because the ungodly have no place with the godly in heaven. That's simply the fact. According to God, those who choose not to live for him or believe in him, consider the ungodly or the wicked here, they're no good. They're not good to the purpose that he created them to be. God created all of us with a purpose. And, but if we simply don't choose God, then we're not fulfilling the purpose that God created us for, and we're just simply no good to him. Therefore, they'll be scattered by the wind. In other words, they will not stand guiltless before God in judgment. And that's what it says. They'll be condemned at the time of judgment, eternally doomed, separated from God, as we talked about earlier. That's the fact of the matter, and that's terrible to say, and it's sad, and it breaks my heart that there will be some that Jesus said will choose that way. But then we get the promise. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. You see, the psalm presents two pathways. The life of blessing versus the life of judgment. And I wonder the, 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 what choice do we want? So there's two paths. Blessing or judgment. And I think if people would just hear it in just a, a, a very simplistic way, which I think we try to say, Not a hellfire and brimstone message, but a message to say, choose God, choose life. Against God, you choose death. That's simply the way it is. So those who choose to believe and serve the Lord will be blessed. God will know each one personally, for God watches over the path of the godly. He watches over, means that he guides them, he helps them, he knows them personally. Just like Christ is our personal Savior, right? Our personal God. So we know that he knows us intimately. But for those who do not accept God, lead themselves to destruction. That's what the Bible says. Man, I just wish people would hear that today, hear that message today. And it's a message of hope because the story of God, the the Bible is a message. It's a love story. It's a love message for all to hear, to embrace, to show how God came, created us in love, wants to sustain us and save us in love, wants to take us with them in love. It's a love story. So we need to understand and embrace that. And my hope and prayer is that each person chooses to live a blessed life. And there's much scripture that talks about choosing life that I just didn't want to bring out tonight for time's sake. But remember, those blessings that we talked about, they just don't fall into our laps. It's not something we just say, oh, I can't wait till the blessings to fall into our laps. They are a real choice that we need to really make 
in order to receive God into our life and to receive all of his blessings. We need to make those daily choices to walk with God, mm -hmm. to meditate, to not uh, hang out with those that would influence us in negative, ungodly ways. We need to do those things uh, in order to receive the totality of all the blessings, the fullness of God, to live a blessed life or a truly happy life in the Lord. And that's what I have for you tonight. And I hope that it was a blessing to you. Amen. Lastly, we uh, still worshiping. This is going to show up for Tuesday, but we're worshiping at 8.30 and 10.30 here at the church. We are in Christmas season, and we are thankful for the opportunity to do so. We're live streaming at 10.30. We uh, are enjoying the opportunities to come together. I think it's very important during this Christmas season to stay engaged with one another and keep our focus on God. We continue to uh, have strong safety protocols to keep everybody safe uh, when we gather together in worship. And we continue to move forward trusting in the Lord. And it is a good place to be trusting in the Lord and being mindful of things around us. Prayer, praise, proclaim. Tuesday is 930. We're having a great time of prayer. We're praying for you. They're praying for us. And man, we're seeing God do some greater things. And that is absolutely Wonderful. Wednesday nights, we're doing Hanging with Pastors A and J, so we hope you are enjoying this time with us as we are enjoying engaging with you on these wonderful nights. Next week will be our last Wednesday of December because then we'll have a couple Wednesdays for uh, Christmas and New Year's that we won't be engaging, but we might stop in to say hello, somebody, uh, so look for that, um, but we want to just let you know. And then lastly, uh, we want you to know we're very thankful for our church family and friends. We're thankful for you and who continue to support our church in so many wonderful ways. We are blessed to have such an awesome TOB family. Hey, let me tell you something. If you're part of our family, God bless you. You're awesome. Thank you. We love you. And you guys are absolutely awesome. And if you're with us, one of our friends out there in Facebook land, engaging in our ministry, God bless you. You're awesome as well. We thank God for you and pray for you often. So let's continue to stand this journey together in faith and let's continue to pray for each other. And we just hope that you stay safe, mindful, be healthy, my friends. Let's make sure that we have a wonderful time of uh, engaging with Christ uh, in this Christmas season. We're going through a series on Sundays talking about uh, the series messages, Rediscover Christmas. So engage with us and that would be an absolute blessing. So keep trusting in Jesus. Pastor Jennifer is going to pray us out. All right. Lord, we thank you for tonight and thank you for each one that has been um, part of this Bible study tonight and those that will hear it later. Lord, I pray you would just bless each one for the time they've spent in study to your word, Lord. And I pray that you would help us to be those strong people, that we would know the path that you have for us and we would choose that narrow path, even though it may be hard, as the word says that we would rely on you and trust you to see us through. And Lord, I just thank you for um, this season of, of Christmas. Lord, and I pray that we would just be an encouragement and a blessing to those that um, we can uh, communicate with, that we come in contact with. Keep us all safe and healthy until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we are excited about the Sundays coming up. Our Christmas service is on the 20th. Yeah. We have a Christmas Eve service that we are blessed to be. Of course, we got Sunday coming up. Uh, there's going to be some solos. I think yours truly is going to engage in a Christmas song, which is going to be but it's fun. Not a, solo. not a solo. It's no. a trio. Um, so, I mean, there's some fun things it's coming some up. Good stuff there's coming some, up. There's some fun things coming up. And we're having our Christmas uh, on the 20th, our yeah. children Christmas program. Yes. We're going to sing a song for y'all. Miss Debbie's been working hard uh, to get that blessing. And I yeah. believe there's going to be some sign language with that as well. So, yes. uh, man, it's going to be good. But, hey, so a lot of things to engage with. And, of course, we will be doing it online as well at 1030. So, God bless you all. Stay safe. We love you. Hey, well, this is Pastor Anthony. Pastor Jen. Saying, have a blessed night. We love you. We'll see you when we see you. God bless. <laughs> Bye-bye.